We recently recounted the times we encountered video game bosses who were big unfair cheatsters, employing tactics like pretending to delete your save file, learning from their mistakes and adapting accordingly, or just being from Bloodborne. The YouTube comments on that video, however, revealed there were plenty more times when you, the audience, had suffered a similar fate at the hands of these end-of-level cheaty McCheatersons. Here are yet more times you folks were bested by a bent boss. Enjoy and beware of spoilers for the following games. As human beings, we all fear skeletons as a symbol of death, and spend most of our time trying not to think about how there's a skeleton inside us right now. Oh god, I thought about it. As skeletons go, however, they don't get much less threatening than Sans from hit indie RPG Undertale, a friendly skelly who helps you out throughout the game, and wears a hoodie, enjoys naps, and has a fondness for skeleton puns. <laughs> I mean, he does talk in Comic Sans, but we won't hold that against him. However, if you decide to take the genocide route through Undertale, where you kill everything that crosses your path, you'll find yourself on Sans's bad side. This is something you may not enjoy, as suggested by commenter Joseph Atwell, who asks, What about Sans from Undertale? Yes, as Joseph suggests, Sans is the final boss of the genocide route in Undertale, and is absolutely not interested in fighting fair. For a start, he goes first, being the only enemy in the game to do so, and his first attack is a nightmare bullet hell of bone mazes, wall slams, and skull lasers. What's worse, though, is that Sans breaks the golden rule of turn-based combat, that rule being that you have to stand there and be hit when it's your opponent's turn. Instead of doing that, Sans just sidesteps all of your attacks, meaning that you can't actually hit him, and you have to just weather his incredibly powerful moves before getting another chance to do something that he'll just easily dodge. Just for good measure, he then starts throwing his bones into the menu screen, so you can actually take damage while you're trying to take a breather and figure out what to do next, or consume some healing items. Survive enough of Sans' attacks, and he'll go into his final mode, trying to bore you into quitting the game. First, he'll pause for a full minute, and if you've ever had to sit for a minute looking at an out-of-breath skeleton, you'll know that it's actually a pretty long time. <coughs> Then he'll explain that he's just never going to end his turn, so you'll never be able to attack again, and the two of you are just going to sit there until the end of time. Eventually, he falls asleep and you're able to land a final blow, thanks to a bit of trickery of your own, but up to that point, this is without a doubt the hardest, most unfair fight in the whole game. Maybe next time we'll take him up on his offer to spare us. <coughs> Or just not go the genocide route and not get into all this trouble in the first place? Yeah, probably that. How dare you! I'm Antoine! I am the king of cuisine! No matter, no matter, this can still be a once in a lifetime meal, so sit, relax. Antoine will make you. Dinner. Being a chef is a high-pressure job, no doubt. There are the precise timings, the punishing drive to experiment and discover bold new flavours, and the constant pressure to not go mad and start cooking with human flesh. Very common, according to zombie fiction, where people can't go two days after a zombie apocalypse before they're chucking their mates in the cooking pot. Dead Rising 2 has one such chef who is also a member of the Cheaty Bosses Club, as pointed out by commenter David Quitch, who says... Dead Rising 2, Chef Antoine, that man would just stuff his face whenever I even pricked him with a needle. Yes, Chef Antoine is a formidable foe on his own merits, packing a weighty frying pan that he'll smack Chuck with if he gets too close. But where he crosses the line into being deeply unfair is the fact that he is almost constantly eating. 
That's bad news for you because eating restores Antoine's health, and as soon as he takes almost any damage, Antoine races off to scarf down another plate of his human hot pot. <laughs> Steady on, Antoine, there'll be none left for the customers at this rate. I think that is the customers. Oh. Ugh. We are the flame, they cry, and darkness fears us. They descend, spurred on by fantasies of riches and redemption, to lay bare whatever blasphemous abnormality may slumber restlessly in that unholy abyss. Darkest Dungeon is an RPG in which you and your party explore the darkest dungeon of the title. It's pretty dark, I guess. You can still see things. Anyway, misleading title aside, Darkest Dungeon is an often overlooked gem of an oppressive, Lovecraftian RPG with some interesting mechanics including a stress level for your characters that rises the more unpleasant things happen to them, and can lead to mental illness and heart attacks if not kept in check. One thing that no amount of gambling in the local tavern can reduce the stress of, however, is the game's final boss, as noted by commenter John Remmers, who writes, Darkest Dungeon? The final boss makes you choose two of your characters to instantly die. So if you want to stand a chance, you'll be wasting two fully leveled heroes. What John is referring to here is the game's final boss, Heart of Darkness, a sort of gross sentient cosmic heart with a face who created all life on the planet and is now apparently keen on removing yours from you. Behold the heart of the world, progenitor of life, father and mother, alpha and omega, our creator and our destroyer. One of the ways it can do this is through the ability Come Unto Your Maker, an instant kill attack that will trigger automatically twice throughout the fight. Once when Heart of Darkness reaches two thirds health, and then again at one third health. Darkest Dungeon features permadeath, so once these heroes are gone, they're gone. And in an unbelievably cruel twist, Heart of Darkness makes you choose which heroes get the chop each time. Ooh, this is gonna be awkward. Okay, let me try. Listen, guy, it's nothing personal, it's just that you're the worst character on my team, and if you die forever, we'll notice it less than if it's one of the good ones. Okay, I think I'll let them down gently. Oh, wow, that sucked. Hey, don't worry, buddy, you definitely won't be next. He's definitely gonna be next. Well, the little Dara Vermin has finally collected all the trophies to become world champion. What took you so long? Now we prove who the fastest driver really is. There aren't many rules in kart racing. That's why you're allowed to hit other racers with red shells or throw banana peels at each other. In kart racing, only in kart racing. However, there are a few cardinal rules that are sacrosanct and that only truly cheaty racers would break, as noted by shocked and appalled commenter GoTree64, who says, N Oxide just taking off before the race countdown finishes is just downright rude. Mr. or Mrs. Tree64 is referring to Nitrous Oxide, the final boss of Crash Team Racing on the PS1, who is an alien from the planet Gasmoxia who has two arms, four legs, and no morals. Nitrous is already at an advantage thanks to his perfect stats for speed, acceleration, and turning, and also has infinite weapons, including the weapons of all the other bosses. Despite all this, he still decides that you can never have too many advantages, and so, in the final race against him, he sets off before the light turns green. The nerve! Honestly, there are some rules you just don't break. I am leaving, Mr. Oxide. Good day, sir. Oh yeah, the banana peel's still there? Yeah, I know. Thanks. Ah. Uh, damn that smooth. I feel alive again. Wanna drink? I'll pass. No More Heroes tells the story of Travis Touchdown, a nerd who wins an internet auction for a lightsaber. And then, instead of becoming internet famous for two weeks after footage of him flailing it around in his garage goes viral, he uses it to go and actually kill people. Yo, help me out here. Where's this death metal dude? Bad answer. <laughs> So unrealistic. Travis's goal in the game is to rise through the ranks of the United Assassins Association by killing those ranked higher than he is. 
And one of these killers is another cheaty boss who doesn't fight fair, according to commenter Super Llama, who says, Bad girl from No More Heroes who will occasionally drop to her knees in the middle of her boss fight and start crying. Half the time it's a chance to get in some free hits, but if you go for it when she's got one hand on her bat, it's an instant kill against you. Yes, this is Bad Girl, an assassin who lives in the basement of a stadium, dresses like a 19th century milkmaid, and spends her free time baseball batting gimps in the face. This is insane! It seems like she got her assassin ranking through quantity, not quality. Regardless, you're going to have to fight her, and as Super Llama points out, you're going to need to have your wits about you. After you inflict enough damage, Bad Girl will run off and start crying, but you need to pay attention. If she's covering her face with both hands, then good news, hero. This means you can go and wail on a now defenseless crying girl for some easy damage. If she's only covering her face with one hand, however, then bad news, hero. That means she's playing possum and just waiting for you to get close enough so that she can do this. Ouch! Still, I mean, Travis might be okay. Yeah, I mean, he did take seven baseball bat shots right to the face, but there's no blood, so if he doesn't take any more damage, he might recover. Oh no, that's done it. Delegation is an important part of being a boss, which is why I have the outside Xbox production assistants take care of my dry cleaning and car maintenance, freeing up my time for more important boss stuff. I told you we can't hire any assistants. Then who did I give my best suit and car keys to? That was just some guy. Never mind that now. In Saints Row 4, Zinyak is the leader of the invading Zin Empire, so he'd be forgiven for a certain amount of delegating his responsibilities. He's a busy man, alien. What with all his abducting people and nutting the president. See you good night. But as commenter Riley Ingle notes, you have to draw the line somewhere. You forgot Zinyak from Saints Row 4, who cheats so much that the character actually calls him out on it. The f okay, that is not fair. Yeah, you tell him, boss. And yes, for instance, Zinyak delegates so much of his climactic boss fight that he spends the finale hiding behind a powerful force field and letting wave after wave of explosive murder bots and Zin underlings handle you on his behalf. Clever, but ultimately futile. Even your technology won't save you. We'll see about that. Zinyak, I respect your managerial style, but this time you've gone too far. Like that guy with my car and tuxedo. He's not coming back, is he? Where, where, where? If it isn't the Freedom Pals and their newest recruit. What have you done with the new kid's parents, fat ass? Nothing yet. But when I'm finished with you, I can't say they'll be exactly safe. This has gone far enough. We end it now. The only thing about to end is you, Mysterio. We aren't gonna fight you, Carmen. Now put your stupid hand down and stop playing games. We have to stop him, you guys! We've seen some terrifying bosses in this video. Alien overlords, cannibalistic chefs, ancient unknowable horrors, but they all pale in comparison to the final boss of South Park, the fractured butt hole. A face drawn on a small boy's hand who calls himself Mitch Connor. Sure, that doesn't sound particularly intimidating, but that's because it doesn't convey quite how much of a cheating bastard Mitch is. As commenter Killer Blads noted on our last video, me before watching video. Man, I bet Mitch Connor is going to be high up on the list. Me after watching the video. Where's Mitch Connor? Yes, despite being just a hand with some lipstick on it, Mitch Connor is a formidable opponent thanks to his complete disregard for the rules of both the game and reality. I wasn't ready when you attacked, so I'm not taking that damage. He'll ignore your attacks, deflect other attacks back at you, and apply random status effects to your party, and you'll need to keep an eye on the steel turn timer at the bottom of the screen, because if it runs out, Mitch will nick your turn and use it for himself. Uh, God, goddamn you guys. This isn't fair! I'll say. Well, 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 good to see you again, Mitch from an alternate universe. Oh, god f 
Damn it. When you and Mitch face off at the end of the game, things are even more unfair and confusing because there are now two Mitch Connors, one on Cartman's hands, the other on Kyle's, and they're both trying to convince you to attack the other one. <laughs> How about you, Freedom Pal? Which one of us is the real villain? Are you really gonna make us do this, Kyle? I'm not doing it! Ugh. I'm sorry, Kyle, but this is your fault. Ugh, this is so confusing. How am I supposed to know which Mitch Connor is which? I'm sure you make the right decision. Okay, that's enough South Park for today. <laughs> It'll take more than that to take me out, Freedom Pals. Okay, those are your picks of bosses who were super cheaty. And hey, we didn't mention Psycho Mantis because literally everyone on the planet knows about Psycho Mantis. Okay, so we have videos up here, one from us, uh, which is about bosses with a weird weakness that you could exploit. Uh, and down here we have one from Outside Extra about the sort of first bosses, so not end of game bosses, who we think deserve some kind of promotion because they're that tough. Like and subscribe if you're new.